City Church, so glad that you're back with us today. Hey, to, just to let you know about our upcoming schedule, we're still planning on June 14th and June 21st, uh, having some outdoor services at the ballet, just weather permitting, and, uh, and then moving it indoor June 28th. And that's if everything kind of continues to go on track. Uh, we think that's a great way of just slowly moving back in, keeping everybody safe. And uh, we hope that you can join us if you feel comfortable doing so. Hey, you remember back in our 10 year anniversary, we gave everybody one of these Kingdom Vision for Tulsa books. Uh, we want you to have this. We want you to go through it. Right now in our sermon series for the next few weeks, we're actually gonna be taking some principles from this book. Uh, you can download this at citychurchtulsa.com slash microchurch if you don't have one. And it gives a vision for Tulsa and, and our microchurch vision. And we want you to lean in right now. We've, we're starting some incredible microchurches. If you're not connected with one, we want you to be. Over the next several weeks, what's gonna happen is this. Uh, I'm just gonna present one of our uh, kind of culture principles. Uh, of City Church. And I want you and your micro church and whoever you're meeting with, whoever is at home, I want you to lean into this and begin to study this on your own. Uh, this morning, we're going to be in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Now, I want to tell you a story. Uh, the story uh, is about a father and a son. Uh, they're in a boatyard one day and they look over kind of in the corner and there's this blue tarp on the ground. As they pull the tarp back, what they see is one of the most coveted boats ever made a 1968 Lamborghini Aquarama. Uh, one of the boats, they only made a few of them, powerful, just a beautiful boat, but it had been sitting there for decades. Man, so it was rotted, it was, it was falling apart. And they made it their mission to say, hey, you know what, we're gonna fully restore this boat. It took them three years, six months just to sand down the boat and repair all the, the rotted pieces of wood. 25 clear coats of, uh, of paint put on the outside of the boat. They were meticulous. They took apart the dashboard and repaired everything and reinstalled it, made the chrome shine, uh, reupholstered the seats. Three years of their time, their money, and their attention. It finally got to the point where they were ready to, to take the boat out for the very first trip. The dad looks over uh, at the son, excited about it. The son looks at the dad and says, Dad, are you ready to go for our very first ride? The dad looks at the son and says, Hey, son, here's what I want you to do. Uh, make sure you don't take the, the boat out of the boat harbor. I want you to keep it just right here. And make sure you don't go past 50% of the, the engine capacity. They had put two V12 four liter engines. I mean, this thing could run. And the son looked at the dad so discouraged. You mean we've spent three years of our life doing this and we can't even take the boat out on the water. The dad said to the son, you know, we put too much time, too much energy, too much hard work into this to risk it getting broken, to risk it um, possibly failing. Now here's the tragic part of this story for you and I. I think Sundays uh, at churches all over the world, uh, we see something similar take place. We, we prepare, we train, we go to classes, we get theological training, we hear the word of God, we hear sermons week after week, and guess what? We never leave the harbor. Our boat just stays in the harbor. We're, we're under 50% capacity of what we're capable of doing. Why, why is that? Because how many know it's safe in the harbor? How, how many know you don't have to risk it once you stay uh, in the harbor? But let me just say this to you. The Spirit of God that lives in you did not create you to stay in the harbor. God created you to go and to live on mission for Him. Last week, we talked about how we at City Church, we're committed to flipping this funnel from just to come and see and to come and consume to a, a come and go. And then Jesus says this to us, like, I, I bring you in in order to send you back out to go and to make disciples and how Jesus could do more with three people or 12 people who were fully committed to the gospel than he could with a multitude of crowds that gathered around him. This morning, I just want to give you two really quick principles of our kingdom principles. The first one is this, that we believe every believer is a missionary. Every believer. That means you. And some of you are like, hey, pastor, you don't know me. You don't know what I can do or what I'm capable of. There's no way that I'm missionary. And I would say, no, you absolutely are. Because here's what happens in Matthew 28 is that Jesus gathers everyone around him and he commissions them. And it wasn't for the few. It wasn't for the talented. It wasn't just for the gifted. It was for anybody who called himself the disciple of Jesus. He said, I want you to go. I want you to make disciples. I want you to teach people to obey my commands. I want you to baptize them. And guess what? I'm gonna be with you. And my authority is upon you. And he's called you and I. He's called you and I to look around and say, man, where can I go? 
Where do I hang out? Where do I play? Where do I work? Where are the places that I live? And how can I take the gospel and bring the kingdom of God into that place, into that area in my life? The second principle is this. We are spirit-empowered disciples of Jesus. The same spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and I. Like we have two four liter V12, 350 horsepower engines living inside of us. And yet some of us are, again, we're living at 30, 40% capacity. The spirit of God wants to work in us and through us. But how many know in order to do that, our faith must be exercised. Your, your faith has to have legs. Your faith has to move out of the harbor into the world and say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in a place and I'm gonna live in such a way where I need the spirit of God at work inside of me. Let me say this to you, City Church, this global pandemic that we're in is affecting everyone. Let me, say, let me say this, the opportunity that it has given us though is that people are open and receptive to the gospel. I mean, their lives have been shaken. They're in need, they're, they're looking, they're hungry for something to grab a hold of. And we as the people of God, we position ourselves right now uh, with the gospel in order to, to meet those needs, in order to share the good news of what Jesus has done in our lives and through our lives. So here's what I want you to do today. I want you to gather around whoever you're with. If you're in a micro church, here's the discovery study for today. It's Acts chapter one, verses one through nine. The setting for this is Jesus has just given the Great Commission. He is about to ascend into heaven, and this is the very last thing Jesus is gonna say to his followers. Can you imagine the very last thing? That's gotta be something important. And I want you to wrestle with the implications of us going and Jesus saying, I'm gonna send you the spirit of God to live in you and be with you as you go. I'm praying that God would use you in incredible ways during this time. Here's what I'm believing for you, City Church, that you would live in light of the Holy Spirit within you, that we would be a church that ventures out of the harbor and believes that as we go and take risks for the kingdom of God, as we reach people, that God would move in us and through us. I'm praying for you, I believe in you. Can't wait to see you again. Until then, let's go and be the gospel.